My name is Shuyu Lucy Zhou, and I am a second year medical student at the University of Arizona College of Medicine, Phoenix. Today's RSNA case of the day is on the topic of metacarpal and chondroma. The patient is a 33-year-old right-handed female who presents with hand pain after sustaining wrist trauma. Hello, this is Dr. Jimmy Sadi. I'm the Section Chief of Musculoskeletal Radiology at Creighton University School of Medicine in Phoenix, Arizona. I want to encourage you to review our case on the RSNA Case Collection website where you can see all the detail. This YouTube presentation is just a summary. On this slide, we have three radiographs of the patient's right hand in AP oblique and lateral projections showing an expansile medullary lesion throughout the first metacarpal with chondroid matrix causing endosial scalloping. There's no cortical break or acute periosteal reaction. There's no gross soft tissue mass. The patient has a history of rheumatoid arthritis and is referred for evaluation and treatment of an incidental finding of right thumb, metacarpal, and chondroma. On this slide, we have two coronal MRI images. The first is a STIR sequence and the second is a PD FATSAT sequence. Both sequences demonstrate the first metacarpal expansile lesion causing endosial scalloping. The lesion is predominantly hyperintense in signal intensity representing cartilage, the matrix is the hypo-intense, thin, curvilinear signal intensity between the cartilage. There's no cortical break or fluid-fluid levels, no associated soft tissue mass. Here we have two sagittal MRI images. The first is a T1 sequence and the second is a PD FATSAT sequence. On the T1 sequence, the expansile first metacarpal lesion is predominantly iso-intense to muscle and the endoscular scalloping is clearly seen. On the PD FATSAT sequence, the first metacarpal expansile lesion is predominantly hyperintense in signal intensity, representing cartilage, and the matrix is the hypointense, thin, curvilinear signal intensity between the cartilage. There's no cortical break or fluid-fluid level. Finally, we have an axial T1 MRI. The expansile first metacarpal lesion is predominantly iso-intense to muscle and the endosial scalloping is clearly seen. The final diagnosis is enchondroma. The patient presented with minimal findings of occasional swelling, tenderness, and weakness. Imaging demonstrated benign features. However, surgery was elected per the patient's request to confirm diagnosis. Pathology showed lytic bone lesions with cartilaginous proliferation consistent with enchondroma. There were several differential diagnoses, including unicameral bone cyst, chondroblastoma, bone infarct, and chondrosarcoma. However, each of these diagnoses has their own unique presentation that was not found in this patient. Unicameral bone cysts can be fluid or blood-filled, and they often present with osteolytic lesions and well-defined margins. Chondroblastomas are a rare cartilage tumor found on the epiphysis of long bones. Bone infarcts, also known as osteonecrosis, are most commonly metaphyseal medullary lesions with serpentine sclerotic margins. And finally, chondrosarcoma is a malignant cartilage tumor found on flat bones with moth-eaten osteolysis, endosteal scalloping, and calcifications. In summary, enchondromas are common benign cartilage tumors found in the bones of the hand, and they're often discovered incidentally. Radiography is the best initial modality to evaluate and will elucidate expansile bubbly lesions with endosteal scalloping. Overall, the prognosis is favorable and asymptomatic enchondromas can be monitored while surgery is generally reserved for symptomatic tumors. We hope you enjoyed our case and thank you for your time.